The following is a hockey podcast out of Vancouver and Surrey, British Columbia. It'll only consist of a lot of puck talk and even more BS, or in actual words, banter and satire. Enjoy and as always, go Canucks go. People, people, on today's episode, we have no Trevor, which means no problem. Hey, speaking of no problem, your Vancouver Canucks are going to be fine, more than fine, okay? On today's episode, we'll be talking about Brock Besser being way better than we thought. And Elias Patterson, he is far from pouty. Uh, think about what he did on Saturday night. Uh, you wouldn't do that. And a lot of players on this team wouldn't do, again, what he did. And that's provide impact in a way that does something. Pedersen is a dog. We'll also talk about my second favorite Canucks number two D-man of all time. Enjoy the show. Your Locked On Canucks, your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app today and use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get $100 matched on your first deposit. That's promo code LOCKEDONNHL. Terms and conditions do apply. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Locked On Canucks. My name is Kyle Bandwidth, but more importantly, this is the show that gives you your Canucks. Yes, your Canucks every day. Hit the subscribe button and the like button if you did enjoy today's episode. And wherever you're listening to this, leave us a review. Now, we can take the heat, okay? I've told Trevor this many times. Many times. If we're going to do this, then again, we got we to gotta be built thick. And I feel as if that belief over the, the last couple of months since we signed up to do this has helped me become more resilient to the inevitable. Right? Think about it. The Canucks losing a lot. It seems like that. The Canucks, a mediocre stretch of hockey games right here. That is the truth. Look at the results. And mediocre in Vancouver isn't just mediocre. It's it's something that pokes the trauma, okay? Let's get right to the point. It does. And recency bias. We, we all have it. Uh, you could feel it in your stomach that uh, that this may get dark. Well, well, that's what your stomach is telling you. I get it. All that being said, back to back to the positivity, back to the resilience, back to the truth. And the truth is, Brock Besser is a lot better at hockey right now than he has been in his entire NHL career. A more complete player, scoring a lot of goals. And over the last 10 games, Really, really noticeable. That's impressive. And this was supposed to be the opposite, right? Of what I'm about to say. Well, well, not the opposite. This right here, what I'm about to say, could never be imagined. Five on five, Brock Besser has been way more consistent than Elias Patterson. It's just the truth, and that's a good thing. I'm not even going to say that's a good problem. That's not a problem. That's saying that things are different. How can it not be? How can it not be? Some of these guys got a lot better. Uh, Maybe some of these guys started to feel the heat. Maybe they were really bored of what's been the norm playing hockey over here in Vancouver. But the accountability has has been there and the desire to get better at hockey is being proven, and individually speaking, Brock Besser is a lot better than I could have imagined. I think a couple weeks ago, I uh, I asked for forgiveness, right? I was saying it for months and months and months. There's no way Besser should be playing with Miller. Uh, that's been boring in the past, and it's going to be boring again, and it's been kind of the opposite of that, completely. They're engaged. It's a different dynamic. It's not just all flair. It's the details. Besser, a really good two-way player. It's there. The chemistry. Still work to do, but it's, it's there. Shout out Brock Besser. Now on that episode a couple weeks ago, I did mention that, yeah, I was cool with him scoring goals, but I still felt as if he was leaving a lot of moments of invisibility 
in games. I, I wanted more from him. Could there be a uh, more noticeable effort from Brock Besser game in and game out? Could he get to that uh, Tyler Toffoli level, right? Just be more on, top of your game more often. I didn't think it was possible because everything was going right. I didn't think Brock Besser could elevate and just become a way better hockey player in the span of a couple weeks. But I don't know what the fancy stats are saying, but again, the last 10 to 15 games, he's been right right there with Miller as far as generating a lot of chances. Uh, there's a world where Besser, Besser has, what, 20 goals this year? He, he's missed a lot, yet he's there with 15. That's a beautiful thing. It's, and I guess this is what this is what Trevor means, right? He doesn't try getting so emotional after losses. He's more, he's more in tune with looking at how the team played, how did certain individuals do, and maybe that's why I've been a little less emotional during this weird stretch of games because I'm kind of doing the same thing as far as noticing everything underneath the loss, and I feel as if the positives still outweigh the trauma, right? This regression, a.k.a. this fall-off, and I don't see it from this club. The elite players, JT Miller, Quinn Hughes, Elias Patterson, Thatcher Demko, too good, too good. At the top of their class. And yeah, there's going to be some slumps, some streaky play every now and then, but uh, I just mentioned four players. When all of them are on, this team's hard to beat. When only two of them are on, this team is still in games. I don't see a world where all four of them turn off for a stretch of games. In other words, they're always going to be in games. The Canucks are here. Those guys are, again, at the top of their class playing as if they're there and have been uh, from the start of the season outside of this little stretch for Demko and Patterson. But look at Hughes and Miller still still up there. Uh, that's a lot, of, a lot of substance to lean on when facing a bit of adversity. Now, uh, we talked about, you know, what's under the losses. Yo, what's under those guys, those four players? It's Brock Besser and Philip Ronick. I'm going to say those two names again, Brock Besser and Philip Peronik. Based on what I've been seeing, I haven't, I haven't been noticing both these guys just floating out there and, you know, riding shotgun to their line mates or their D partner, even though, you know, if you're from the other side, you know, not, not watching a lot of Canucks games, you could make those connections. I, I'm not seeing that. Those two are standing up on their own. Really important players involved in a lot of facets of the game aren't really taking stretches of games off or periods. They've been really consistent. And we're in game, what, 20, 22, 23? Those two guys, Besser, Heronic, X Factor type guys, really playing above. Expect expectancy from again, my perspective, my predictions from the start of the season. I'm just overall confident that this team isn't going to collapse, and they're going to give us meaningful games every month until you know the dance starts, the playoffs, that experience. All in all, games matter, man. Games matter. I mentioned this on a Saturday night around 12 a.m. I guess Sunday morning. Dude, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. December's coming up. I just turned 30. Didn't get to do this at all in my 20s. December, more time, more times with the friends, the family, more times to rekindle over the Canucks. And uh, yeah, the Canucks were playing before, but nobody gave a you know what. It was boring to talk about the Canucks, but here comes the holidays. Here comes all that love. Here comes a lot of moments to sit down, watch the game, talk hockey, and uh, be yourself once again. For that, I'm blessed. Speaking of which, I'm blessed to be doing this here on Locked On Canucks. Trevor Bags not here, obviously, and that's because uh, he's uh, 
He's being the second best dad in the world. Bro, Christmas is coming up. This guy wants to be Santa Claus. He, he doesn't want his children to believe in Santa Claus. He's one of those guys. Okay, I'm, th- I'm thinking, I'm assuming, because he's working hard. I'm thinking that he wants to take that title, be that champion, be that her- hero for his children. So he's got to do what he's got to do, man. Second best dad in the world, not here for the Canucks fans, but uh, we are here. You know, you and I, the Don't Do Studios, Locked On Podcast Network, and these games matter, and these conversations matter. We'll get more into this conversation after the break. Again, you're listening to Locked On Canucks. I got to tell you, passion, drive, and patience is what brings home the winning trophy, and it's also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts to choose from from your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash, baby. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusion supply, eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Okay, okay, we happy, we back on another episode of Locked on Canucks. My name is Kyle Bowen. Hit the subscribe button and the like button if you did enjoy today's episode. And uh, believe, man, believe. Believe that it's not going to happen. Maybe I'm only optimistic because I'm getting older. Like I said, I'm 30 now. I'm choosing to... uh, I don't know, assume only good things with the things I love. And if I didn't do that, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't be getting a lot of work done because the Canucks really, really matter once again in my life. Uh, The first love in my life, again, really matters. And it could be a lethal combination if not treated the right way at the age of 30. And I think the right way, again, is to be looking at the truth and understanding that there's a lot of talent here and a lot of heart. I used the word accountability earlier. I feel as if maybe it's not consistent, but we're not seeing it turned off. It's there in glimpses and there in big moments. Elias Patterson down 4-2 to the Sharks. Hockey night in Canada a couple days ago. He does what? He lays one of the hits of the year. Uh, That's your superstar. That's your RFA, right? Your pending RFA. No years left on the deal, and he's doing that to help your Vancouver Canucks get some momentum against the worst team in the league. And that's important to note because you know when you lay somebody out like that in 2023, in the world of hockey, you are then a target. It's just the truth. It's going to be chippier for you to play the game. And I must add again, this guy doesn't have a contract at at the end of the year. and He doesn't really need to be doing that. But we've seen it time in and time again. Is that how you say it? Uh, Patterson's willing to do that. And that's, yeah, lay the body, but more notably, do whatever it takes. And those are guys you win with. Yes, you win with. I'm telling you the truth. I saw that play on Saturday Live, and I know it was against the Sharks. I had a homie who I was watching the game with, and I told him straight up. As much as I want them to come back, I think they're going to come back. Uh, They're one of those teams. San Jose sucks. I'm content if, you know, it goes the other way. We lose the game because of what I just saw, and that's a dog. One of those guys in the world of hockey who plays for your Vancouver Canucks, and I'm expressing love towards the physicality, the will of his game when... uh, (laughs) We're talking about Elias Patterson. He's one of the most skilled players in hockey as well. So much untapped potential. So many moments to be seen. Plays like that, moments like that. And just in general, what we've seen for most of the year this season, it gets you excited, man. 
This is the show, right? The West Coast bias. I'm only doing it for you and you and you and you and you and you. And you. Eh, not for you and you and you and you. Again, West Coast bias. Uh, we are all Canucks. I mean, locked on Canucks. I cannot wait for April, May, and June. I want to see that Patterson in the playoffs. Now, I saw something. I'm not going to be able to run Comet Corner the, the right way on today's episode. I don't got a lot of time trying to get this up, but I saw something in the comments that <sighs> I don't want to say piss me off, but it, it has me connecting with the people, okay? I feel for the people. And I think one person went on to assume that Pedersen might be pouty right now with the contract and whatnot. And maybe he's not too happy with Alvin talking about it to the media a couple weeks ago. I don't know. Maybe he's being pouty. And it's reflecting in his play, his offense. I think he's got five points in nine games. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just Kyle Bowen. Anywho, Pouty Patterson, uh, the audacity. How do you call a player Pouty, potentially being Pouty, if he's the one doing that? Again, laying the body, putting it on the line. Patterson's a smart player. He knows what he's doing. He knows who's on the ice, uh, what the angles are, how close a San Jose Sharks player is to, a, to the player he's targeting. He knew he was going to take a cross-check from that Benning guy, yet he did it. A pouty player doesn't do that. They're in a 4-2 game, a game 22, game 21, whatever it is, of the regular season when you're an RFA. You don't got a contract after this. He's the opposite of pouty. He's a damn good hockey player. And this uh, uh, this slump that he's on, it has to come to an end for this team to consistently find success. And it could be moments like that that get the gears really going. That hit and the loss, right? And the loss. And another game where... You're slowly slipping down the point leader. Uh, the point leaders in the NHL. It's just not going for you. Uh, five points in nine games. We're talking about Patterson. He knows it's not good enough. Uh, a lot of things did happen though on Saturday that could get ish going. Okay. To sum it up, uh, and for me, this just makes a lot of sense for the immediate future. Uh, let's say. He doesn't put up the points over the next couple of games, right? He's still finding his game. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna rag on him. I'm not gonna do it. I got too much respect for that guy. He's been doing it from day one. There's been moments throughout his his career where he's again willing to put matters into his own hands or shoulders or whatever physically. And more and more of the NHL is going to be able to see the complete force Patterson is only when he's able to display his skills in the playoffs, and that's happening in a couple of months. And for that, I'm blessed. One more segment. Uh, give me a couple more minutes, okay? We got another ad break coming up. Uh, what am I going to talk about here? I don't know. We're just doing this off the dome. Uh, maybe I'll tell you about my favorite Canuck player of all time. Well, one of them, who, for whatever reason, made that list. Why not, right? Again, you're listening to Locked on Canucks. Have you ever been stressed out by buying tickets at the last minute? I'm a big last minute deals guy, and I found that the best place for killer deals at the last minute is Game Time. Game Time, they got my back, baby. I get these emails from Nicole at Game Time, and she's always teasing me with conscious and events this week in my area. Not only are those weekly emails a tease, but Game Time also offers me flash deals on last minute tickets. Want to go to the game the night of? Game Time, they got your back, okay? They also have exclusive flash deals for, on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Now, you have no choice but to get off your rear end and go check out a show on a Friday night. So snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price. Guaranteed. (laughs) 
Okay, okay, you're back on this episode of Locked On Canucks. My name is Kyle Bowen. That's B H A W A N. And this right here is the show called Locked On Canucks, the one that gives you your Canucks every day. Subscribe, hit the like button. If you did enjoy the episode, I did also tell you earlier that we are all Locked On Canucks, aka we are all Canucks. And here's the deal. You, you don't got to be nice, okay? If you didn't enjoy the show, I know we're on the same team. You, you don't got to hit the like button, okay? Uh, we've been saying it for days and days and days and days. Uh, you could save the world with one less lie at a time. And I'm not lying about this, okay? One of my favorite Canuck players of all time was Matthias Oland. I don't know why. I don't know why. Because those teams that I started to watch in the early 2000s had a lot of star power, okay? EA Sports cover players, okay? Cover athletes. That type of star power, okay? West Coast Express. Big Bertuzzi. There hasn't even been a player since. For real. Name me one player since Todd Bertuzzi that's done it like Todd Bertuzzi. You can't. And we're talking about those guys. But while all that is going on, when people would ask me, you know, who's your favorite Canuck of, of all time? You know, who's your favorite Canuck on the team? More often than not, I would answer Matthias Oland. And I don't know if I was just being nice because I was listening. Listening to a lot of radio, a lot of Don Taylor, a lot of everything Canuck. And often, Oland was mentioned as a force and somebody who could have none of the spotlight because of the guys I just told you about. There also wasn't a lot of flash to his game, but he was, again, important, a force in his own way, and a big reason why I fell in love with the Vancouver Canucks and a big reason why that team would win some games. You got to do that to, you know, spark imagination. I'm not here without Matthias Oland. And I was thinking of Oland a little bit More, because one player who does remind me of him, but is also a player who was a lot better. A lot better. Again, recency bias, a thing. As is the West Coast bias on the program. But yeah, Oland. He reminds me of Philip Hronik. Straight up. Hronik, strong, big, smart. He's been a force. He's got some swag to him. Maybe not as physical. That's probably the big difference, but the importance. He feels he feels the same, but also a lot different. And here's the entirety of the spiel that I'm making up on the spot. It's It's as if for years and years and years this team has Obviously, you know, struggled to find a number one D-man. It took them 50-plus years, 49 years, whatever it was for the day to come where Quinn Hughes donned a Canucks jersey, and boom, it was over. We finally found our guy. Um, I would also say this team has struggled to find a real number two guy. And I guess it's hard to display your skills as a number two guy when you're not playing with a number one guy, but you know what I'm saying? And maybe that number two guy is a rarity in the NHL, like a legit number two guy. If Quinn Hughes is 96 overall, 95 overall, your number two guy is 89, 90 overall. And maybe we haven't had one of those guys. And maybe Hronik is that guy. Now, I know it's only been 20 plus games. But he did also show a lot last year based on some stats that I don't understand, okay? I think the Athletic had him getting paid $8 million based on what he was doing on the ice. And look at him. Look at him this year. He's that and more. He's really good. And here's the kicker. Probably going to get better. The Canucks, man. They got one of those guys. A number two D-man. Hence why optimism is is here. It may be supplied by a lot of delusion, but I just appreciate the individual talent on this team. 
and I think we're getting a lot more. Like I'm talking way, way more from two individuals that I didn't think would supply this this type of performance, and that's Brock Besser and Philip Ronick. Those two really, really good this year. Before I get out of here, uh, one more note. One more note. Okay, Kuzmenko, he's going to play tomorrow. Rightfully so. He should have played on Saturday. I think uh, D. Giuseppe might not play. Who knows how the the practice, the line combinations, uh, the the information will look like tomorrow. But um, I'm glad to have Kuzmenko not only back, but immediately put on the top line with Pedersen and Mikheyev. What if? What if? And there's a good chance that this dude who loves the game, who's really talented, who also hasn't been that bad this season. In fact, I think he's been pretty good. A lot better two-way-wise. Not perfect, but a lot better. Uh, Nonetheless, he's back in the lineup. Uh, There's that chance that that guy who can do it can do it, and that's be up there with Besser and Hironik as the pillars under the big pillars, Demko, Hughes, Miller, and Pedersen, and that's... That's pretty sick. That's seven guys. And then you got Niels Hoaglander, right? Anyways, uh, that's a conversation maybe for tomorrow. Uh, Trevor Beggs will get back on the program tomorrow. Uh, I was scared there, though, man, for real. I saw that chemistry between uh, Clay Emu and Trevor over the weekend, right? On the uh, Steve Dangle Podcast Network in Game Over. Uh, they, re- they recapped both of the games, and they were having fun, man. I've never seen Trevor smile that much. Never seen him smile that much. Anyways, Locked On Canucks is now over. Subscribe and hit the like button. Shout out to the Locked On Podcast Network for doing their thing. A lot of effort on this side, man, for real. Every day, people just talking about their teams. It's a blessing. It's also not the easiest thing to do when your team loses. It's tough out here, all right? You're drinking a lot of coffee, man. Sometimes you're drinking some tea. My name's Kyle Bowen, though. Have a good morning, a good afternoon, a good night. I don't know when you're listening to this, but hey, we'll see you tomorrow. Peace.